Well, looky here. I'm back in Baja. <laughs> oh man, it feels good. Two years ago, I attempted the entire Baja Divide, all 1,700 miles in one go. It was incredibly beautiful, but also incredibly hard. I pushed myself too much, and I blew myself up and decided to quit halfway through. Ugh, Jesus, come on, man. But I always knew that I would come back. So in early 2020, I got all my stuff together, flew to San Diego, dragged my bike box through the airport, put together my bike, rode through San Diego, jumped on a trolley, called my mom at the border. I will be super careful, I love you, and I will see you when I get home. Put my bike on a taxi, made quick friends with the taxi driver, Victor, put my bike under a bus, and then a 14 hour ride to Vizcaino, where I jumped off the bus, bought some beans, filled up my water, and here I am. Hello Cardone, it's good to see you again. Oh man, it feels so good to be here. This return to Baja has been a long time in the making and I can't believe I'm actually here. It's just, I know these cactus, I know this smell. It's like visiting with an old friend. Hello Baja, I'm back. Oh, let's have a good time. You know what I'm saying, everybody? The goal of this trip is to obviously have a lot of fun, to make some new friends, to enjoy beautiful mother nature at her best, to not crash my drone, <laughs> to not get lost, to eat lots of beans, and just to be out here and to start the decade off right. 2020, that's crazy. We're living in the future, people. But besides all that, I'm excited just to be out in nature by myself with my thoughts thinking about life and how beautiful it is and how grateful I am to be here and yeah, those are all really good things. So I'm gonna put the camera away now and, and enjoy my first few miles of Baja in solitude. How can I forget? Can't start off a big ride without my good luck mantra. Here we go, everybody. You know the words. Sing it along with me. No crashies, no whammies, no flatties. Woo! Time to get off the bike because I want to show you something. I'm seeing something that I've never seen in Baja before. That's wildflowers. And it's been really rainy here the last month. And this is what happens in the desert when it rains. And it is beautiful. also see that the little flowers are blowing around quite a bit. It's breezy out here, it's perfect temperature, and today the breeze is going my way. Whew, got the tailwind. Found my first cool little critter of the trip. Big old beetle. Hey buddy. He's got his butt all propped up. Showing off his nice butt. All right, I found the slow moving sandy stuff. <laughs> That's all right. It's been a great, oh, great day. Oh, it's hard to ride through sand and talk to the camera at the same time with one hand on the handlebar. I'm gonna take this moment while I'm standing here in the middle of nowhere to talk about something new that I've never had on a ride before. And it's one of those fancy GPS computer thingies that a lot of people have in their cars and it tells them turn for turn directions. Well, I finally joined the 21st century and I got one. This one's made by Wahoo, which is awesome because every time I look at it, I go, Wahoo! And I loaded all the Baja Divide maps in there and it just gives me a little line and I follow it. Last time on the Baja Divide, I had a little Garmin e 
whatever and I'd have to pull it out constantly and fish through it and make sure I was on the right route and this thing is so much easier. <laughs> Baja just inspires a lot of whooping and hollering. It's about 4.45, I've ridden about 50 miles, which isn't bad because I started at 11.30 a.m. And uh, in Baja you can camp pretty much wherever you want. There's not a whole lot of people out here and uh, anything goes pretty much as long as you're not on private property. So I found a nice spot right here that seems to be free of uh, cactus and stickers and stuff and uh, I'm going to set up camp and wait for the moon to come out. Last time in Baja I did not have a tent, I just slept under the stars which was great. But this time I thought, you know, I'll try this tent, it's super small and easy to pack. There, I did it. I've got my house all put together, got my laundry up. This is another new toy I'm bringing on this trip here. You see Baja's in the middle of nowhere, there's not much cell reception. So this is a, a Garmin inReach and it works all over the world no matter where you are. And the reason why I have this is twofold. One, so I can send a message to my mom every single night letting her know that I'm okay and that she can go to bed and not worry about me. And the other thing is that if, if anything horrible happened, there is an SOS button and uh, the cavalry will come save you. I don't know who comes to save you, but somebody will come and save you. It's a pretty cool little device. My friend Larkin lent it to me. Thank you, Larkin. So it was a nearly perfect day until I opened up my food bag and I see that avocado looks pretty gnarly. Ew. I'm still gonna eat it. It's still good. It just looks sloppy. Looks like baby diarrhea. <laughs> there goes the last rays of the sun, my friends. And as an homage to Burning Man, when the sun goes down, you all howl like a bunch of wolves. Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh! Oh, yeah, look at that beanie goodness. They don't sell these kinds of beans in the United States. And I love them. I mean, of course we have refried beans, but this brand exactly is so good. Mm. This is another very funny thing that I always bring on a bike tour. It's also a token of luck, but a butter knife is a very handy thing to have for peanut butter or beans. You don't want to be messing around with a Leatherman getting in jars of peanut butter, gets it all gunked up. This is what you want. I've had a butter knife with me on every single tour, ever since my first tour from Honduras to Colorado. And a little bit of salsa huichol to spice it up. I've been dreaming about this moment right here, eating bean burritos in the middle of the desert in Baja since my last trip. And I'm pretty excited that I'm actually here doing it. Buen provecho a mí. When I'm in the middle of nowhere in a beautiful area, usually nature, I like to do what's called love shout outs and this was introduced to me by Dana my good friend Dana you all know Dana you love Dana and the idea is that you're just sending out love and you get to pick some people in specific maybe they need some love or whatever it is but it also it brings them into your moment in your space so let's let's do it here we go I love you mom I love you Ethan Logan Sarah Carter Brindley dad Melissa there's a lot of people, but you get the idea. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I do this usually when I'm on the on the edge of a mountain or a cliff, and you kind of you think maybe they can hear me. I don't know. Maybe they can. Maybe they can't. But you're sending out love to the universe, and that's always a good thing. Whoa! Check this out. Oh my God! Look at that beautiful, gigantic full moon. Oh man, that's incredible. Look at that. I am in for a treat. The moon 
always looks so awesome when it's just on the horizon. And this camera's not really doing it justice, but believe me, it looks like one of those Hollywood full moons. Mother Nature, I love you. I do. I'm a big fan of you. You make me happy.